Hello, everybody, and welcome to Cinema Rogues episode 26. Today, we are talking about Terminator Dark Fate. And as always, I am joined by uh, co host Andrew. That's me. That's him. I'm the co host this time. <laughs> um, if you want to hear more, Andrew, listen to Board Game Barbarians. Uh, he has a uh, group of people over there on his Discord that love to talk to him about board games. And uh, yeah. Look for it on, on Apple Podcasts. Yeah, it's on Apple Podcasts. It's on Spotify. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, you can check out Sightail Studios, um, Twitch, and YouTube uh, for, for my content. I'm still in the process of figuring out what I want to do. I have several ideas of what to stream, and I think the answer is I just need to stream something if I'm going to. Uh, like the past few nights I've been just, uh, dicking around with the guitar and the bass and, uh, like some drum MIDI and having fun with that. Well, yeah, I could stream that. Yeah. Could stream that. Um, Retro Warriors, uh, also, if you haven't heard of them, uh, somehow, uh, go check them out. They are a retro video game podcast. Uh, they help fund us and, uh, yeah, it's pretty great. All right, so let's get into, uh, I guess, our two weeks. Uh, I watched the first half of DuckTales Treasure of the Lost Lamp. Um, that's that's as far as uh, we got before I was like, hey, are you interested in this? And the one kid that was still watching it was like, not really. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, we don't have to watch this. And I think we ended up watching, uh, I don't know, some shorts or something. Nice. Um, my... One of my kids was bugging me because uh, DuckTales Season 3 came out. So we started watching that uh, on Disney+. Plus. Um, that's I, I know I've talked about how good DuckTales is, the, the new one on the show before, but it is, uh, it, it's really good. I watched a couple episodes of it and did yeah. not, didn't like dislike it or anything. It's just not, didn't care to keep watching it, I guess. Yeah. Well, you didn't really grow up a DuckTales kid. Right, yeah, I did. I grew up with DuckTales, like the original oh, okay. cartoon and the video game. All right, I thought maybe that was just a little old for you, but that's fine. I know I feel like I'm I'm an ancient old man, but no, I it's feel not like really if, the truth. If I had children, I'd probably watch it with them, but I've got other stuff that I'm watching that I guess takes priority over it. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Um, other than that, I've been uh, really just playing The Witcher Three. Uh, and reading and reading books, I found out. <laughs> I figured out that that like I, I like reading books while I'm working because sometimes when I'm when I'm doing something, the process takes a couple hours, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, so I, I can read a few chapters in a book or whatnot. Um, if I don't have anything else that that's that's you know super pressing. Um, and then I I started playing uh, The Witcher Three. And then I realized that most of what I'm doing in The Witcher 3 is like looting books and then reading those. <clears throat> so it's really like most of my like 50, 60 hours is we've just been spent reading. So just reading in video games and not in video games. Yeah. That's, I mean, as, do what makes you happy, man. <laughs> There's so much lore. Like The Witcher 3 never really grabbed me. Um, I had some like, I guess personal reasons or whatever and and memories that 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 was associated with the witcher 3 and a specific person uh that you know made it difficult to get to at one point like when it first came out yeah and then uh and then i got over that as the years went by but like it never really hooked me and i never really got uh like super far i think i got to level 10 ish or 7 ish it was still in velen um you know towards the beginning of the game and but this time it's hooking me and and there's so much goddamn lore in this stupid game. Yeah. I never um I never played it whenever it first came out. And so I didn't start trying to play it until after the Netflix show. Mhm. And even after the Netflix show, like I've tried to play it like 3 times since then. And yeah. uh I my every time I talk my dogs start playing. Um and every time I get to like the same point which is the guy at the fort after you're in, like it's the very beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. Like the guy in the fort after the inn where you like try, you're trying to find Yennefer. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Vesemir or whatever. Yeah, I get there and then I'm just like, man, I'm bored. And I just like, <laughs> I just stop. And I, all three times, that's the point that I've got. Like, because I've had to, I'm like, I'm close enough to the beginning where I might as well restart and learn the controls again. Because by the time I play it, it's I've forgotten the controls. Yeah, yeah. It took, you know, I, I, I used to be that way about it too. And, and like this time I committed to, you know, just picking it up and going with it and, and being shitty at it for a while. And it took, probably a couple of days to get used to the controls again, but then I was off and running. It was nice. Um, so what about you? What have you been doing? Um, well, I've been, my wife and I have slowly been trying to watch all the Marvel movies again. Mm hmm. And we've gotten, uh, we're almost to the end. We've gotten to, uh, we watched Thor Ragnarok and Ant-Man and the Wasp this last two weeks. So I think we only have the Avengers movies left. The last two Avengers movies. Oh, wow. Because we were watching in chronological order, like, uh, time period-wise. Uh, gotcha, yeah. Um, so watch that, watched MODOK uh, on wait, Hulu. Wait, hold on, wait. Were you, like, super committed to it, to where, like, you watched Ant-Man and the Wasp, and then you watched uh, Infinity War, and then watched the after credits theme, or thing, on Ant-Man and the Wasp? No, we we still watch the after credits theme stuff whenever it's on whatever movie we're on oh okay so Here, go ahead yeah we're not that hardcore where we watch the movie and then we go back and watch the after credits and then we watch the next movie and go back to watch <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> watch <be> amazing <laughs> watched modok on hulu um and that's a fantastic show um what else what else yeah, oh i um that's on our list to watch um, cause like when we, we saw previews for it or whatever and, and Kristen's kind of hit or miss on Marvel. She doesn't mind it, but it's not a priority for her to watch per se. Right. And then I was like, well, but it's Patton Oswalt and written and, and produced by Patton Oswalt. And she's oh, well, then let's watch it. Then we have to watch it. Um, and then other than that, I watched army of the dead on Netflix just came out. Oh, is it good? I, I it's on my list to watch. I think we'll probably watch that one soon. I mean, no spoilers. It was a very slow movie. Yeah. And it was kind of boring. I feel like we didn't give it a good, like a good enough shot. Cause we were on our phones like the whole time. Like it, it was a movie that w- where like stuff was happening sort of, but I'm like, yeah, and I'd rather look at my phone right now than watch this. So uh, yeah, like, you might have to give it another chance at some point, but yeah, my wife was like, Maybe we should give it a second sh- uh, second chance and actually watch it and not look at our phones. And I'm just like, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't have fond memories of it. Like, like it's not a bad movie. It's just not. It's very slow. Very. Yeah. Slow. I mean, I'll I'll watch anything that Tig Notaro's in, and the fact that like Tig Notaro's in this movie through like nothing but green screen is amazing to me. Like she, yeah, because she replaced a guy. Yeah. That had some bad allegations against him yeah i like that they just completely ripped him out of the movie and cg cgi'd in another character yep <laughs> yeah it was pretty great and they and didn't the- change her lines they just you know they kept him exactly the same and they're like well she's a gay character so meh. i mean for the most part you can't you can tell like the first shot like you can tell that that she's kind of green screened in or that after the fact they added her but yeah. every other one, they they did a pretty good job of making it look like she's in the movie. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to watch it. I hope it's not as as bad as you say. I hope you like it. I don't. I don't like. I said I don't think it's a bad movie, but it wasn't. Maybe it, we had a friend that was gonna that was gonna watch it in theaters, and they were like their friend group was gonna be the only people in the theater. Like they didn't rent it, but nobody else was buying tickets to it because it's probably because it's a Netflix movie that's out for free right now. So why would you go see it in theaters? Right. Um, but we almost went and saw it in theaters and we probably would have liked it better because we would have been paying attention the entire time instead of looking at our phones. But I don't know. Maybe if I have another two hours to kill one day, I'll, I'll give it a second chance. All right. Uh, let's get into news. Uh, Sonic two is wrapped filming. I don't know if, if you care at all, uh, our dear listener or Andrew for that matter, um, but, but my kids care and I hear about it all the time. I like the first movie. It's good. Good stuff. 
Um, and we'll have more to say about Sonic 2 later. We will? Okay. Yeah. Um, AT&T has announced plans to spin off Time Warner and Discovery into a new business called Warner Media. Um, there has been a lot of speculation as to specifically why, why they're doing this and, and, and what the purpose is. Um, AT&T, AT&T's official line is that they're combining them into a single streaming service to compete with Netflix. And they felt that it would be, uh, better under, um, a, the, uh, a new umbrella, um, that is separate from AT&T. Um, like, but, but some of it is, uh, I think, uh, some of the rumors just to get into rumors for half a second, it's kind of, it's unconfirmed, but that, that part of the reason that they're doing this is to get rid of the, uh, the CEO of HBO max. Oh, really? Um, uh, or, or the current CEO of Warner media or time Warner or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, cause they're mad at, at him for the HBO max theater decision. Oh, um, and so they're going, putting the whole thing under the stewardship of the guy who is currently CEO of discovery, um, to, to build out their streaming platform. I mean, that makes sense for them, but still kind of shitty in general for that guy. I don't know if that was necessarily a bad call that he made. Right. And it's, it sucks seeing, you know, a company, um, you know, a, that made a, um, what do you call it? Something that's good for the audience, the people. You know, let me hang here. Um, I'm sorry. I had to deal with something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, no, you're fine. Um, a consumer friendly thing. They took, they did a consumer friendly step. That's what I was trying to think of. Um, and, 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 made same day releases on streaming platforms. Um, it's, it's one of the very few things of that nature that, that, that is done these days, you know, you know, Microsoft right. is doing kind of a great thing with like game pass and is accessible and it, it is for everybody. Right. Right. And so to see AT and T kind of like, uh, backtrack on that and, and support, uh, the, the stuff that, that that's just going to make them more money or whatever is kind of frustrating, but you know, it is what it is. No, I totally agree with that. Like the fact that they're just, I mean, did they say that they're going to take that back now, even though they've announced movies that are coming to streaming before, like at the same time that they're going to theaters? Uh, I think their intention is to transition back to that in 2022. Yeah. Okay. So they're still going to do like the movies this year, but then next year they're not going to. Yeah. Oh, well, that's crappy. Yeah, it's dumb. Um, CW is adding Saturday to its original content broadcast days. Uh, Again, another one of those. I don't know if anybody cares about this, but I care. Um, Just because it's an interesting tidbit. It's the first time in CW history that they've had Saturday programming. Um, So it's changed them to a network that has uh, uh, original programming seven nights a week. Mm-hmm. Um, like every other major network. Um, so it's, it's again, I, I guess it's kind of neat because CW has become a thing in my lifetime. Yeah. So watching it go from like a baby network to a real network what is, is kind of neat. What did they previously have on Saturdays then? Just like no new content. It was just reruns. Um, it was given to the local affiliates to run whatever they wanted to run. Oh, uh, Okay. Um, but in, in exchange for that Saturday time block from their local affiliates, they've given back uh, Monday through Friday, three to four. That used to be like kids WB and stuff. Mm, okay. So now that's going to go to local affiliate programming. Fun. Fun indeed. Oh man. Speaking of local affiliates, your, uh, your city was on John Oliver last uh, I, night. I noticed. I saw that. Got oh, that was amazing. Tricked with a sex blanket. <laughs> the greatest invention of all time that uses electromagnetosis or something yeah that was I, I, my favorite part was developed by the germans uh 80 years ago <laughs> uh she just rolled with it it was great yeah, nothing like a nazi sex, nazi blanket. sex blanket yeah 
my new, uh, band, my new band name. Nazis, like, that's a good band name. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, you better patent that. Um, or trademark it. Sony is teaming up. Uh, it's Sony Pictures Entertainment Division and it's PlayStation powerhouse Sony Interactive to turn PlayStation games into mass appeal movies and television shows. I don't know uh, how I feel about that. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to, I guess, to see Sony... Like, Sony has properties to do that with, and they... So... It makes sense for them to 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 do that, um, but I don't know, man. Just video game movies never turn out good, especially Sony. Uh, Sony doesn't do a good job without help from outside sources of taking already existing material and turning it into movies. Yeah, Spider Man being the most uh, blaring example of that. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. Like the. Uh... Uh, the the original like the Sam Raimi Spider Man movies, right? Mm-hmm. They were good when they came out. I mean, I would argue the second movie is still a pretty good movie. Mm, I haven't seen I it in years, though, so maybe I should go back and watch them. I guess there it it's a lot more um like Evil Dead one than I remembered it being that makes any sense i'll have to go back and watch this i rewatched the amazing spider-man the andrew garfield one recently mm-hmm. and that was that was a fine movie i mean it wasn't like a super great spider-man movie but yeah it was enjoyable i i'm still mad well in retrospect i, I guess it, it it makes uh it makes it sense but like i'm still mad that they didn't uh extend the the Gwen Stacy Peter Parker romance out for like two or three movies more well that's because in the second movie you know spoiler alert she dies but well right but I'm saying like I it would have been neat to me to see them make like an entire trilogy that was Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy right yeah and like establish that relationship and how uh, like on equal footing they are intellectually and, and how they're like, you know, good for each other and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then in the, in the, in the second chapter of the next trilogy, like then kill her, you know, you <laughs> spent like four and a half movies getting to know her. It, I think that would be like really fucking emotionally, uh, powerful. Yeah. But, then uh, you know, did. then again, they never, they never would have made it to five movies, I guess. Yeah. Andrew Garfield and some other stuff made sure that, that after the second movie, the third movie didn't happen, which is, uh, uh, I would say it's disappointing, but I don't like the way that they made the villains look visually. Yeah. So I'm okay with that happening. Yeah. Um, didn't, um, uh, what's his face? Uh, Electro, the, the actor that plays Electro. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't he say that uh, he's in the new one movie, right? As Electro? No. But he's not going to be blue? Is he in the newest movie? Yeah, Homecoming. Or not Homecoming. What's it called? No Way hey, Home. No Way Home. I almost said Can't Come Home. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I, I have uh, kind of purposely not really kept up with that just because I liked the Marvel Spider-Man movies. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of like trying not to get too hyped with all the stuff that they're saying is coming. So I, I have not heard, I did not hear that, uh, that he was going to be in it. Oh, wow. Well. All right. No more spoilers. Hopefully they, they keep the costumes correct. Well, we'll see. I don't know. I, I would like it. I would like it to be like accurate to, uh, the original universe that they came from. That would be amazing. Yeah, I like I liked uh, Mysterio's costume, and I hope they keep doing costumes that are very much like the comics. Yeah, that Mysterio costume was fantastic. Yep. Um, Raya and the Last Dragon coming to Disney Plus on June fourth. This is news that I heard about today uh, from Andrew. Yeah. Well, we'll see if it actually happens because I've had some issues with Disney saying that a movie's coming to. Th- to the service and then it not coming to the service at that time. Um, but that was only with into the woods. So 
One issue. One issue. So it could happen. It could not. Who knows? I assume it's going to happen because it's a new movie. So why would they? They're the ones that control who releases it. So yeah. Um, and then finally, the Powerpuff remake is getting repiloted. Um, apparently, the the original pilot was interesting, but not good enough for them to order the series. So they want to go rework it. It was a live action Powerpuff Girls too. Yeah, they uh, um, they've aged like they're in their mid twenties. Huh, okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like some of it was uh, interesting. Like like the, somebody described uh, a scene in in a script that was leaked, where like um, not bubbles blossom is uh, threatening to leak Buttercup's nude photos as payback for something uh, while interrupting her marathon sex se- session. That's weird. I feel weird about that. <laughs> so they wanted to <laughs> rework it. Yeah. CW is like, mm, maybe not. Yeah. That seems like a weird choice going from a ch- children's cartoon to that. But I guess they're kind of trying to maybe capture the audience of the people that grew up watching it. Which are gonna yeah, be my, I think the premise is they're kind of like disgruntled, uh, you know, former superheroes, right? That'd so, be good. do they actually have hands or are they circles? You know, and they have hands. It's probably gloves. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, okay. Let's get into uh, today's topic. Today we are ter- talking about Terminator Six. It, Termi- it. I don't know. Yeah, Terminator Dark Fate. Um, came out in 2019, released November 1st, 2019, uh, taking place as a direct sequel to Terminator 2 Judgment Day. A machine from the future is sent to hunt down a human to prevent a human uprising after the machines have taken over. It sounds familiar. It's cause it is. Sounds just like the first Terminator, which I haven't seen. Right. Uh, yeah. So for our audience here, um, Andrew has seen Terminator Salvation. And and now this one. I've seen like parts of the first one. I've seen clips of the second one. And I'm talking like clips. Like I've seen like two or three scenes on like a, <laughs> on like a YouTube video or something. Yeah. Um I was I was never allowed to watch Terminator as a child and then I just haven't as an adult cared to look it up. Well, if you do decide you want to watch it, you get a lot more of, of, of what you got with this movie. Yeah. No, no spoilers yet. Um, <laughs> uh, for development, when James Cameron was brought in, uh, in the team decided that it would, uh, ignore Terminators three through five. Um, so this is taking place in a, uh, separate timeline, uh, from the previous three movies. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and that was a decision that they had made early on. And there's one specific decision that they made that we're not going to talk about. Cause like super major spoilers, um, uh, that they decided like immediately, this is what we're going to do to, uh, move on from the previous, uh, franchise. Um, Tim Miller, the, uh, director originally brought in some contemporary sci-fi writers to get ideas on how to make the franchise, franchise more relevant for today uh which is where they got the idea for uh the character of grace the the human terminator hybrid okay. not ter- terminator excuse me human uh the augmented human um and the original set of writers watched all the terminator films uh before getting to work and uh determined that the time travel in the later films was getting too convoluted so they wanted to simplify things down a bit for this film uh, which uh, I feel like they did really effectively instead of um, <clears throat> I think I think the Terminator mythos had gotten so like convoluted in in because the the concept of it is that from the future they send somebody back to change the past, which means that the future is changeable, right? Right. So every subsequent movie, then you had to deal with repercussions of changes that you have made in the previous however many movies and, and write them up. And then like what the one that you watch Terminator uh, salvation takes place in the future. Um, so you, 
you know, so you've got a lot of continuity to worry about in there so that you preserve the integrity of the, the previous three films and shit, you know? Bas- basically, they have to deal with time travel, and time travel's a huge headache storyline-wise to keep track of. Yeah, and they're six movies deep. Yeah. Um, Like I said, it was directed by Tim Miller, who also direct. He's directed four movies that I see uh, on his uh, IMDb. Deadpool, uh, this movie... Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic 2. Wasn't it the same director that did Deadpool 2? Uh, no, he left Deadpool 2. Oh, okay. And that, that was part of the, the production. He left Deadpool 2 uh, and came and directed this movie. Oh, nice. Yep. Uh, story by... Uh, there are several people that have uh, story by credits. There's James Cameron, uh, who came in as, as a producer early on. Uh, Charles Eagley... Josh Friedman, who was the showrunner and executive producer or writer of uh, Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles, the series okay. from like the early 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, David Goyer and, and Justin Rose also have uh, story credits. Um, it stars Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor, Arnold Schwarzenegger as a robot. <laughs> <laughs> Mackenzie Davis as Grace, um, Natalia Reyes as Danny Ramos, the person the uh, Terminator is after, and playing the newest Terminator called Rev Nine is Gabriel Gabriel Luna. Excuse me. Um, critical response: Rotten Tomato uh, is, is very good, seventy percent critic score, eighty two percent audience score. Uh, Metacritic not as good, fifty four on the uh, reviewer side and three point nine on the user side. Ooh, that's that's real bad. Right. Um uh what do you think of the movie? Spoiler free. Um I th- I thought there was some like kind of weird points in the movie that I I guess we can talk about in the sp- spoiler zone. Spoiler zone. Um but overall it was a pretty solid action film as far as action films go. Uh, especially if you've never seen a Terminator movie like I have. I mean, I don't really count Salvation because it's not a good movie. <laughs> it's not a good movie at all. It's so not. It, it, it's better than that movie. So if you've seen sa- just Salvation like I have, you should watch it because it's better than that movie. I mean, that's a fair assessment. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think uh, of it? I thought, um, I mean, it was a Terminator movie and is one of the good ones, you know. Um, I think uh, it's hard to talk about this movie without talking about the previous three. Um, Salvation, Genesis, uh, excuse me, Terminator 3, and then Terminator Salvation and Terminator Genesis uh, were all various shades of bad. Um, and I think uh, it's it's weird because the first two Terminator movies are are, are so good, right? Mm-hmm. Um, from a well, on a on a on a, most people think that it's that that they're really good. Um, people who haven't seen them have no opinion, I guess. That's right. But, I have no opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but so so it's weird that like you know that this movie, if it is any good, slots in at the third best movie in the franchise. Okay. Um, but you know, it hit that mark. It was good. I mean, I know we're not talking about it, but I would say the the main thing that I remember about Terminator Salvation is there's a scene where a guy gets ejected from a ship in like ragdoll physics down like a, a chasm of some sort. Mm-hmm. And I just remember me and Justin in a movie theater laughing out loud at that scene. Because of how goofy it looked. <laughs> Um, it's, uh, yeah, that's not a good movie. Oh my God. <laughs> um, all right. Would you, would you suggest that, uh, somebody watches it? I mean, I would say it's a fun action movie. And if you're a Terminator fan, um, it's like I said before, it's better than salvation. So definitely, you know, get some, some points back for that, for that movie. But, um, I would I suggest it? I would say only if you're in one of those like states 
where you don't know what to watch, but you need to pick something and it's free and available. Or you just want to watch the next Terminator movie. I mean that's that's fair. Um I I would say if you're into Terminator movies then then absolutely watch it. I don't know why you haven't watched it already. Um and if you're into action movies um and especially uh you know modern action movies it's a, it's a very modern action movie. Um you know it has its roots in, in in like cheesy 80s and 90s action movies but it's uh it's updated uh pretty well for for modern times. Um it's Some good. of the CGs a bit iffy. Yeah, there were a couple scenes that were kind of laughable. Um, uh, especially like that airplane scene. Oh yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> um, but but overall, it's it's entertaining and and you know it, it's it's worth a couple hours, I would say. And it's on. I watched it on Amazon Prime, and you have it here on Hulu, so I guess it's on both. Uh yeah, I guess it's on both. I I watched it on Hulu. Nice. Uh it took me a minute to find it on Hulu, but Apple TV insisted it was on Hulu, so that's weird. Okay. Usually you can just like search for it, but I mean, I would say it's an action movie. It's got explosions and guns and punches and sword arms. So many sword arms. So many sword arms. Tentacles, but not in like a sex way. It's like in a kill you kind of way. Mm, kill you sex tentacles yep <laughs> that's right uh, great well uh, let's get into spoilers spoiler zone spoiler zone <laughs> uh, alright let's begin with the uh, a recap of the Terminator universe up to date and you're gonna do it cause I don't know Right, or, sh- I'm, or I'm should going... I do it? Should I just guess? Yeah, you should. You should guess. That you want me to amazing. guess? Okay. So first, all right. Movie, what happens in Terminator One? Yeah, go. First movie, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger comes back to the past from the future to kill John Connor um, because he is a revolutionary person in the future that stops the robot uprising, and Sarah Connor has to stop him from doing that. Okay. Second movie. Second movie, Arnold Schwarzenegger is not the bad guy in that one, um, and there is a new Terminator that's all liquid and stuff, and Arnold Schwarzenegger has to stop the liquidy Terminator from killing John Connor again. Okay, third movie. Third movie, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is not the bad guy again, and there's another Terminator that's trying to kill someone, and Arnold Schwarzenegger has to stop him. All right, Terminator, the one you saw. Salvation? Yeah. Uh, I'm trying. I've seen that movie, and I'm trying. <laughs> it's weird that I know more information about, like, the second one than I do Salvation. <laughs> uh, it's in the future, and John Connor has, like, a heart condition or something, and they need another person's heart in order to give him a working heart so he can continue to be the uh, leader of the revolution and uh, there's a bad Arnold Schwarzenegger and then a good Arnold Schwarzenegger. And the bad one is like younger and all CG and gross looking. Uh, and then you've got old Arnold Schwarzenegger. And the part that really bugged me was at the end, they do the operation in the middle of a desert during a sandstorm. Mm-hmm. And I was like, there would be so much sand in their open orifices where they have to transfer those hearts. Well, where else is he going to get his gritty personality, Andrew? From the sand in his heart that kills him? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, all right, Terminator Genesis. Oh, Go. Um, uh, this one's going to... I have no idea. This one's going to be completely off the cuff here. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger is not in it. Am I right That's about that? That's not a summary of a movie. What happens? Oh. What happens in the movie? That was my summary is he's just not in it. I know that, I think. J- John Connor is not in it. Uh, I don't know, Ian. Like, that's, All right. That's, so, that's one of, I don't got nothing. Was I pretty close the whole time, though? Uh, you were pretty close for some of it. I thought you were going to I thought you were going to correct me as we went on. No, I wanted to see how ridiculous an outlander should get. And I didn't want the real answer to influence your future answer. Okay, um, so 
Genesis, Garfield the cat uh, okay. comes from the future to the past mm-hmm. to eat all of the lasagna so that way John Connor doesn't eat it and get a heart attack and die. Okay. Um, you forgot um, that the the good Terminator that they sent back was Odie. But... Oh, okay. I was close, though. Yeah. That would have been a better movie. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Um, all right, so Terminator One, uh, a Terminator, a a human cy- a human cyborg hybrid, whatever you call it, that is a cyborg, I suppose. Yep, human wow. robot hybrid that is a cyborg. Oh, Cybernetic organism uh, called a Terminator Model One Hundred One, also known as a T Eight Hundred, is sent back in time by Skynet, the human or the 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 AI intelligence built by humans, mm-hmm. to kill Sarah Connor the mother of the future resistance leader okay uh, that would be John Connor uh, at the same time John Connor sends back his top lieutenant Kyle Reese to protect Sarah Connor because this is the 80s and women couldn't protect themselves right that hadn't happened yet right um so they sent uh sent back her her knight in shining armor. Uh he protected her. Uh they fell in love during these circumstances cuz it was an 80s movie. They had sex and then he died. I Kyle forgot Reeves. about the sex part. Yeah. And um that guy. And then uh and the end of the movie uh is she's driving away after the terminator's dead. Uh, recording a message uh, for her future son now that she is pregnant. Oh. Yeah. So the guy that fucking... So John Connor sent back his dad to die. Do you well, think to, John to, to impregnate knew. his mom and then die. Do you think he knew that? I have no idea. Probably. I want like a scene where it shows like his dad go into the future or go into the past and then he's just like, goodbye, dad. <laughs> Uh, you know, that might have been part of salvation where he acknowledged that he knew that, um, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I also just want, I just want like pictures of him, like like he's like, yeah, John always asked me to go fishing and like throw throw the ball, like we're just playing catch, like all the stereotypical son father things John Connor makes his top lieutenant do with him all the time. <laughs> and his top lieutenant has no idea why. He's just like, yeah, we always going fishing. We're always playing catch. We're always going to like. Watch baseball games, going to the park. Like, like I take him to the zoo for some reason. Uh, that, I, that was part of the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Uh, the person who gets sent back in the, in that is um, Derek Reese, Kyle's brother. Hmm. And, like, at one point in that show, he, like, goes and finds his younger self playing, like, catch with his brother. Weird. Yeah, it was weird. Um, all right, Terminator 2. Uh, you were right. Evil T-1000 uh, Terminator is sent back this time to kill John Connor because they failed to kill his mom. Cool. Um, and John Connor from the future reprograms a an Arnold Schwarzenegger to protect his uh, younger self. You think you would have chosen a different model? Uh, yeah, you would think, although... Mm, no, he was scared of him when he first saw it. That was the whole thing. Like that movie was interesting in 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 the way that they advertised it cuz they didn't spoil the twist. They advertised it as if Arnold Schwarzenegger was the bad guy. Oh nice. Yeah. So that was neat. Um anyway, uh yeah, you, you got that mostly right. Uh Arnold Arnold Terminator sacrifices himself uh, because they decided to go blow up Skynet. Nice. So they blow up Skynet and then get rid of um uh, a hand and the 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 skull that were left behind um, from the original Terminator. Okay. Uh, what they did was they used the technology in that skull to create Skynet. Oh, uh, that's where Skynet is on the third one. Uh, no, that's the second. Uh, that's the from the first one to the second one. Oh, okay. And so in the second one, they they go and and uh, blow up Cyber Nine systems that was creating Skynet. Uh, they destroy what was left the leftover from the Terminator from Terminator One, 
Um, and then Arnold's like, there's also a Jeep in my head. And he like dips himself in lava and dies. That's good. I was hoping he like flies into the sun, but I guess <laughs> dipping in he's lava. He's got his rocket fun. feet. Yeah. He's like, I have to go. <laughs> Uh, Terminator, th- uh, and this that's where this movie picks up is is after that happens, right? Okay. Um, because Terminator Three takes place in 1999, I think, and the original Judgment Day was supposed to be in 1997. So Terminator Three takes place after the original Judgment Day, and John Connor has grown up, and Sarah Connor died of cancer in like '94. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's. Uh- realistic i guess sure i mean it, i guess it would have been i don't know whatever um so in in terminator 3 a lady terminator is the evil tournament terminator and sent back um and that didn't age well um but what well, I, I think we've come a, to a different place in how we view women in the past 20 years well most some of some people do yeah um, and so uh, I personally feel that the, the woman Terminator is a little problematic, but whatever. Um, we'll, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, and in that movie, uh, the, the good Terminator by the end of it traps John Connor in a bunker, uh, on judgment day. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so judgment day happens, but John Connor is safe in a bunker and was saved by good Terminator. Who plays the good Terminator? Uh, Arnold. Oh, okay. And then you Salvations is, is more or less correct. It's kind of the story of them sending Kyle Reese back um, for the first movie. Oh, okay. And then Terminator Genesis was a convoluted mess, and there was and Arnold Schwarzenegger was in it. He played a Terminator called Pops that was sent back to like 1974 to protect Sarah Connor as a little girl. So no Garfield. No Garfield, no. Okay. I wasn't close at all. No. <laughs> um, but all that's kind of irrelevant uh to, to this movie. Well, all that matters is the first movie or the first movie and the second movie, because at the beginning of this movie they kill John Connor. Yep. But Skynet's not there, so that still doesn't happen somehow. Right. So the way that that worked out was and I thought it was I thought it was a good move a uh, good move in the way that they did that um was that that they basically they killed John because John and uh, Terminator from Terminator Two and Sarah Connor uh did what they intended to do. They stopped the judgment day that existed in their time, yeah, right um and so that judgment day is is done cyberdyne systems is gone Skynet is never built um uh, and, and it gives it, I think it gives the, the franchise room to breathe, honestly, um, to get out under the weight of telling the story about the Connors and let new people come in. But still telling the same story, but new people, but new people. Well, and, uh, um, part of, of, of the, the quote unquote same story, uh, was, was, Sarah's assumption that they were trying to kill um, Danny uh, because she was going to birth the future leader of, of the rebellion. Right. I, I feel like that was super like telegraphed that she was the leader of the rebellion, not that she was going to have a child that was. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, there was, there was no doubt in my mind that she was like the, the commander or whatever that, that um, grace was rescuing. Yeah. In in that mission. Yeah, for sure. Um which is it's frustrating when you as the audience realize something before the characters do. Way before the characters do. Yeah, like way before the characters do. Like within the first like twenty five minutes of the movie, you're like, Yeah, she's the one. So they're protecting her because she is not because of like a child. Right. And and it shows, uh, and the only person who 
Well, I mean, I guess Danny thought that 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 was the reason they were protecting her was because she was, you know, a mother. But but that's because that's what Sarah assumed. Right. Right. Which, uh, you know, kind of highlights, again, the difference uh, in where the franchise um, started versus where it is um, and and where, again, how we we treat women in movies um, from the 80s versus versus now. Yeah. Uh, which, which is, which is a great thing. And it's, um, I, I thought it was kind of a neat touch to have, uh, Sarah feel that way. Um, and, and then, you know, come to the, to, to the realization or whatever. Be proven Um, wrong. Be proven wrong. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I also want to talk real quick because you've got the most talking points and I just wanted to say my, in the beginning of the movie, whenever, the Terminator has taken over her dad's likeness and Mm -hmm. he's been like shot and punched a billion times. So his face is just a black skull, like Terminator skull. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and Danny's still crying like my dad. No. And I'm like, (laughs) he's obviously a robot. Like there's no part of him that looks human anymore. Like half his face is a robot face. Like, why would you, why would you be upset at this point? Like if I saw my dad punched in the face and he had a robot face underneath, I wouldn't be like, no dad. I'd be like, what the fuck is happening with my dad? That's not my dad. <laughs> it's only half a robot face. He's still good. He's still <laughs> yeah. Good. Half of him's human. Yeah. I thought that, that and uh, her brother, like I thought was going to have like a slightly larger role just because yeah. he, he like, he was in um we oh yeah another movie i watched recently was rock of ages which that's not a great movie but he was the main character in rock of ages oh he was yeah nice um so i thought we thought he was going to have a bigger role just cuz he had a bigger role in that movie and it was kind of weird to see him like die within the first 20 30 minutes yeah um Speaking of that, like all that took place in, in Mexico mm-hmm. and it was nice to see, uh, again, a movie, um, you know, have a diverse cast. They had a bunch of, you know, Latin, Latinx actors. Yep. Um, so it was nice that they didn't, uh, didn't whitewash that, I suppose. Um, and, and Sarah has always had a, uh, has always spoken Spanish and had, had a relationship with, with, uh, with Mexican people. Um, so it's, it, it makes a, a, a bit of sense that she would be in Mexico, to be honest. Yeah. Well, especially with her being wanted in all of the States. <laughs> Only cause she blew up a building in like 30 police cars. Yeah. Whatever. That's, yeah, it's fine. She saved the world. She should be, you know, thanked. No. Well, she saved the world of what could have been. So no one knows. Only she knows she's crazy. Oh, oh, I forgot. Um, Edward Furlong, who played uh, John Connor in Terminator 2, mm-hmm. um, played John Connor in this movie. How? They they used his face as reference and then CGI'd it onto like a kid's body. Oh, okay. I thought he was just like on his knees, like... <laughs> <laughs> Like John Leguizamo style from Moulin Rouge. Yeah. And he's like, hey, mom, I'm getting a drink. Ah! <laughs> Terrible. Terrible jokes. Oh, man. Um, dude, the new Terminator was pretty awesome. I, I felt like he was, I never, like I said, I've never seen the other ones, but I feel like he was, like, too powerful. Like yeah, he's... he was, he was, yeah. He seemed like too like invincible and the fact that he could transform into two different having going from one Terminator to two Terminators Mm -hmm. like the synthetic skin and the the skeleton underneath was very I thought that was cool as hell like it was cool it just like felt from the beginning of the movie which I guess that's a good job on their part like it felt like there was no way that they were going to be able to kill him and it seems weird the way that they killed him at the end. How did they kill him in the end? They used the core from, what's her name, from the synthetic. They oh, used her yeah, power yeah. source and jammed it in his eye, and it, like, melted him, basically. Right, right. Forgot about that. Yeah, that was pretty dumb. Yeah. So, 
like it felt like that wouldn't have killed him especially since they were talking about like an emp which i don't think would have killed him either uh you would think that future machines would be like uh emp proof yeah yeah future machines made by machines they'd have some sort of faraday cage around their electronics or some shit right so it's kind of weird like the way that they i i thought i thought it would have been cooler for them to have him die from getting sucked into the turbine and then just continually eaten up basically yeah Um, that'd be great I, i think most of the terminators that they kill uh have been killed by mechanical means which is, I feel like that's a good way to do it. Like, he gets smashed or something like that. Like, I feel like that's more believable than j- jamming a f- future battery into his eye that electrocutes him to melting point. Like, Yeah, I I, I agree with that. Like, uh, the first Terminator was smashed in, like a, like, a hydraulic press. The second Terminator fell into a molten iron. And the... Th- Third Terminator was smashed by a giant uh, security door. So I guess they just didn't want to like continually have them get murdered by the same thing or get destroyed by the same thing. But I guess, but it makes more it makes it a more believable thing to have something be uh, mechanically deconstructed or whatever. Right, like they were made some like they have to be able to be destroyed in some capacity. Nothing's invincible, but. I feel like I feel like they just deus ex machida at the end. Yeah, I mean they they did kind of kind of deus ex machina him. I that's a weird phrase and it doesn't come out of my mouth correctly. Yeah, I don't know if it came out of my mouth correctly either, but <laughs> yeah, it was just basically like, oh, I have this thing that's inside of me and been inside of me this whole time that'll instantly kill him and I'm going to die anyway. So, let's do it. Like I feel like that should be like, why didn't they just send her back with one of those? Like, in the future, they know how impossible these things are to kill. And if she was like, uh, I have a higher metabolism, and if I don't kill it within a certain amount of time, then I ha- I go into shock and I need medication in order to keep surviving. Like, I feel like they'd be, they would just be like, all right, here's, a, here's one of these battery things. I don't know, maybe it's part of their, their time travel machine rules. They can't transport any other matter. I don't know, it's weird. Can we, can we also talk about how, like, unfortunate all of the time travel was placed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like I was, I, I, I wanted to know more about how they got in there. Like, wh- were they on top of, like, a giant platform or some such? Yeah, like, she, she shows up halfway into a highway an overpass and yeah. f- falls a l- probably like two stories down and then he's also like is everything just higher in the future maybe it's all the dead bodies i don't know it's all just covered in rubble and so yeah. they're all like going into the past and rubble it's just yeah. it was kind of weird the only other kind of thing that i could think is that they have like a tall like you know 30 foot platform for whatever reason Future like platform. the the machinery is that big, maybe I don't know. If I feel like the writers did it because they're like, this would be cool. <laughs> I'm sure. And then it just confused me. <laughs> um, you know, it's uh, I want to talk about about uh, future films that are that are coming up because uh, there are none. Oh, apparently. Okay. Apparently it lost like a hundred million dollars. Uh, not a bunch of people went to see it and, uh, it doesn't look like they're going to make another one. It, uh, um, they, they well, seem go ahead, go ahead. I was just saying it's probably cause the last two movies before it sucked so much ass that, you know, nobody wanted to go see it. Yeah. I think that's where we've gotten to with it as a franchise, which is unfortunate because I, I think it's a, it's a good movie that deserved, uh, a better audience. Maybe it'll do one of those things where it makes a lot of money on Hulu and Amazon or, I don't know, maybe it's sold better on DVD or something. Hopefully. Uh, Because I I would like to see more. They, you know, they set it up so they don't necessarily, um, you know, need the old actors. Uh, You, Arnold is is part and partial to, to Terminators. 
but they've cut off the timeline where he existed. Yeah. So, you know, there's no reason to bring him, him back as a character. They could kill off Sarah in the next movie and, and start a new generation of, of Terminator stars. And I think, um, you know, in the right hands, it could be done, you know, well. I feel like I want more, like, future taking play, like, future storylines done well and not done shittily like Salvation. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. But who knows? Who Who knows? Who knows? Speaking of who, you can see it on Hulu. And Amazon Prime. And Amazon Prime, that's right. Um, go, go check it out. If you're interested in a Terminator movie, if you don't care and you're not into generic action movies, then eh, skip it. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever, maybe go watch the first two Terminator movies and then this one and then not any of the other ones. Yeah. If you, if you ever want to go back and watch the first Terminator movies, I'll watch them with you. I mean, I was thinking, like, I thought about like watching this movie. I was like, maybe I should go back and watch the first two and not the third or the yeah. fifth. I kind of want to go back those. and watch Salvation just because of how much of a good time it was to watch it. But I think that's just because it was me and Justin hanging out and like making fun of it the entire time. Well, that's when you get Justin on a on a call and make fun of it the entire time. Yeah, but we'd make fun of like the new ones too. I mean, the the old like the originals. Yeah, and be great. <laughs> Um, so I guess that's going to do it. Uh, thank you for listening to our show. Uh, if you want to give us a hand, uh, go rate and review us on iTunes. Uh, drop us a a comment on YouTube, subscribe to the retro warriors, uh, YouTube thing. Uh, check us out on Podbean. subscribe to us there. Um, yeah, you know, that'd be great. Uh, and that's it. Next time, uh, we're going to talk about Raya and the Last Dragon, assuming that it doesn't go uh, go away like Andrew fears. Like my fears. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll come out and we'll watch and it'll be great. All right. Well, uh, we'll be back. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.